Pony Express, which I like to call the game of the guy breaking his neck. I'm sure forced perspective or whatever that this is the correct way you're supposed to draw it, but he looks like he's going to break his neck to me. Pony Express is this odd game to me. It's this odd betting horses, but you're not betting on horse racing. You're betting on who delivers the mail the quickest to a town, I guess. It is a difficult, it's a bear of a game to teach. Um, it's very hard to teach. This game is likely going to be a purge for me just because... In order to play this game, I feel like, and even the rule book admits this, you need to play it two or three times with the same group. I'm not sure my group liked it enough to want to keep playing it, even after we digested and understood the rules. I, it, It's a hard game to manipulate. It's a hard game to do the right thing, to make good decisions. Um, I mean, you're betting before any cards are played, which is okay. It's also your largest bed. And then if you... It, it, so you're bidding on these cards, and if you don't bid the most on a horse, then during the racing, which is half the game, you're not controlling anything. And we let that person control the computerized ones, the ones that ties or didn't have any votes or bids on them. So it's very, it, it, it's at least possible in the second half of the game, you're not doing anything, um, which is kind of bizarre. It, ah, man. This comes from a very well and... and very good designer game, Alan Moon. I am sure wiser men than me like this game. And it's hard for me, and I struggle because I will give a negative review, um, which is rare, I think, in the board game industry. But I hesitate because this isn't a terrible game. It, it's probably a very solid game, but one not for me. Uh, the confusing rule set, and the book says that it's unique, but I think, sure. I don't think all people use it, but possibly because it's clunky and hard to understand and doesn't feel like it flows and possibly doesn't make sense. Um, when you play this a few times, sure, it all clicks together and, and you memorize the rules and it comes second nature. But with some games, the theme and the rules make sense so clearly that the rules almost come out of the game, if that makes sense. It reminds me of music where the words go with the music so well that the second, third time you heard it, the, the, the words kind of flow. You know what they are. And, and rules and theme and board games are like that to me sometimes. I'm like, okay, that makes sense you would do that. It makes it click easier in my head. With this, it didn't really make sense why I was doing things. And, and I understood the rules after I grasped them and I was able to explain them and have people understand them. I understood the rules, but they didn't make sense because they didn't flow with the game very well. Um... This is this 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 game. Definitely try this before you buy it, and, and this might even be an okay family game. But you're not gonna play this with little kids or younger kids because it takes a little bit to digest these rules and to understand what's going on. And it's not even that it's rule rules heavy. It's just, man, you will not if you only explain the first half of the game, you will not under, you will not understand how that affects the second half of the game. And they're really two different games that work together, if that makes sense. And the bidding part of the game is nothing... The mechanics and what you're doing are very hard to understand when you're just playing the first half of the game, how they're going to work in the second half. You almost want to play a round of the game and just put it all back together and do it. And that's okay in some games, I think, if they feel worth it. If you feel like, wow, this is great, you know, maybe go through a mission of Imperial Assault or, or Descent, and you're like, okay, I see the grand plan here. But for what amounts to just a little bidding game and moving some horses around, I don't know, to each their own, it, it may not be worth the effort. Maybe that's what I'm getting at. Maybe it's just not worth the effort. Pony Express is going to be a purge for me, but mainly due to how hard it is to teach. Um, I would have to have somebody commit to this game, this, this, not a great game, but this game that they would have to commit to quite a few plays, I think maybe one or two, three plays to get the rules down, and the rule book admits that. So if you're somebody who's played, say, I got this on the first try, great, because the person who wrote the rules didn't think that was going to be the norm enough to put it in the rules. How often do you read a rule book that says, 
you would not understand this the first time. This will require multiple plays. Not very often. Even, even in some of the biggest rule books that I have, they don't actually come out and admit that. They admit that here probably because they were hoping this would be a family game, which is what it sh is, but it can't be because of the rules and how hard it is to explain. Otherwise, the components are nice. I, I like the moving the horses part. That's probably the, the most interesting part because the bidding part, I just you feel so blind most of the time. Uh, it's too bad. Near hit. Could have been better. Maybe it's just this age is showing. Otherwise, uh, fun little game. Uh, but I will be purging Pony Express. Let's talk about the components of Pony Express. You get this... First of all, I guess I should state that everything is not in English, so that is a little difficult, but it is what it is. So, which is kind of weird actually because it's such an American theme that it's strange to see that it wouldn't be in English, but it is what it is. So, you get the scoring sheet that you'll use for the end of the game. Um, you can always make copies of these if you run out. You get these little tillywinks, which are your bidding chips, very cheap and generic. You get this to signify start player, and you get your little things here to represent your color over on the bidding side. You're going to have these really nice wooden horses. These are really neat actually. These are high quality and great components. These are the kind of things that people do on Kickstarter now, but this was made way before Kickstarter, so. And then you're gonna get these cowboy cards, which, uh, pretty generic art, numbers, and this is a, an older game, so all the cards pretty much have the same art. Um, or do have the same art. You're gonna get these spreadsheet cards that kinda tell you how the market will, or the bidding will be adjusted. And then one each of the horses, and then this is to signify which character you are. So you get a big die on it. Okay. And then the board itself is going to be this is where when the you get to the racing part, where they'll be racing through, and these little dots are different colors. And then you have the 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 bidding over here that will occur. Now the components are great in some parts, and absolutely terrible in others. The cards are nice. It's an Alan Moon game, so I think it's, it's, it's well done. The backs are kind of weird with the logo of the company. Uh, but the fronts are fine. The artwork is a little boring, but it is what it is. Uh, this could have been in full color. It's not, but you know, this is the spreadsheet part of the game, so it is what it is. Um, the box, you know, has unique pieces you can put in. Uh, probably wasn't designed for this game, but it's nice nevertheless. And then you get some of the most awkward art I've ever seen. Um, I'm sure this has some kind of significance and it says that. But just the way his head is turned around, I'm sure it's proportionally correct, but it makes my neck hurt every time I see it. Uh, otherwise, you know, everything is good. You can tell it's a little bit dated, but it is what it is. So overall, fine. The rule book for Pony Express comes in a language I do not understand. So I got an English translation off, uh, well, it came in the game and I got it, but I, I bet you it's off the poor game geek or something. But I will say what I can about it, considering I don't speak whatever language this is, probably German. Uh, it's black and white. It seems like there's some pictures. My print off the internet did not have pictures. Uh, this is a hard game to understand. This is not an easy game to sit down and play. Understanding how it all puts together the rules admit that they're very hard to understand that multiple plays May be warranted or even required to understand this game and for such a light simple game I'm not sure why There's just a disconnect from everything and doesn't work for me the rule book While it tries hard to do what it does I don't feel like the rule book lets us down as much as the rules let us down if that makes sense with the rule book, they try really hard to make it clear and probably make it as clear as it could be, or at least as well as I could. Um, but the rules might let me down a little bit. I don't know. This is a game I feel like needs a video to play. 
uh, a video would help this game out a lot more. And this is a game you want to be shown how to play more than r reading how to play. So the rule books have failed to me. I, I don't think it was very good. Take it with a grain of salt because I had to read a translation of it. And it's not the actual rule book in a language that I don't even know how to read. So what do I know? I'm going to try to explain this game the best I can, although the rules were not in English, I had a translated rules, and they weren't great. So, I'm going to do my best here. Everybody's going to get a character to start the game out. It doesn't matter. Only thing that matters is, is this. if you're Tom, you'll be bidding. Uh, the horse colors are here, so whatever horse you bid on, you will bid in this row, Sam in this, Ray in this, etc. So, for the most part, it doesn't matter. But you will get this to signify. So if you get Oregon Kid, you will be bidding in this row. And the way the game works is, and there's not a place on the board for this. So we just kind of laid them out here. And I'm just going to do a couple horses because I'm not going to play the whole game here. But I think you can see those. Uh, better do them straight up and down just to show how this works. So what you'll do, you'll have a number of ch uh, these bidding chips that you start the game with. And what you'll do is, is you'll take five of these on the first round, and you will place this bid on a horse. And let's just say I'm, um, let's see which one you can see better. You probably see Ray better. So I'm Ray, and I'm going to bid five on yellow, because I have a number of cards based on the number of players. So I'm just going to show you this. I have hand cards in my hand. I'm going to show you how this works. And then in the next round, you're going to bid four on a horse, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so each round, then three, two, one, and then you won't bid anymore. But each round that you bid, so you, I bid the five, and I'm going to play a card on a horse. So I bid on yellow, maybe I'll bid on yellow. And let's say, if you can see, let me try to make this where you can see it. So let's say yellow started out here, and I bid eight. Okay, so... Uh, somebody else played, somebody else bid, and they bid their five. Let's say Tom did. He bid his five on blue, and he put a four on blue. Just for argument's sake. And let's say blue over here is on the eight to one. So, what would happen next, I'm just going to try to keep the game easy as possible. I'm going to bid four on my next round. Now, I could bid, um, let's see, bid on blue. I could bid again on yellow and kind of hedge my bets there, or I could bid on any horse I want to. Just for argument's sake, let's say I bid four on green, okay? And the, the consequence of the decision will not be seen for quite a while. So I bid four there. And then let's say, for whatever reason, I bid a one on yellow now. So 8 minus 1 is 7. I would go to this chart. Minus 7 means the bidding would go down 3. So 1, 2, 3. And now it's worth the same as blue. For my understanding of the rules, that's how that goes. And then again, the next round, I'd bid 3. And let's say I put another card down. A 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. It's plus 6. That will increase the odds 3. And it just so happened to go back where he was at. So after you go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, you will play, I believe, 7 cards per horse for a total of um, no, 6 movement cards. So once once a horse, every horse has, once a horse has 6 movement cards, it cannot be, no more can be played on it, and every horse will end up with 6 cards, Okay. And then you have all your betting, depending on what horses you bet on. So you bet one bit of five, one bit of four, one bit of three, one bit of two, one bit of one. And after the bidding is done, you'll still continue to play cards until every horse has a card. Once every horse has a card, then you will take up the cards. So let me, let me just randomly give out some cards here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six for green. And then we'll need some more cards. One, two, three, four five for blue then what you'll do is you'll look at the table over here whoever has the most bids on so yellow the most bids on yellow is ray 
So Ray would then control yellow. And then whoever has the most bids on brown would control brown. If there's a tie, then it becomes nobody controls it. And so these cards will be put with the players who bid on it. So it, it's possible that you won't control any player. So that's a good player to let control the, the, the NPC ones, if you will. But you may control two, three, all, none, any combination thereof. And then the horses will be put out on the board based on their bidding odds. And I'm just going to kind of set them out here, the four that we're talking about. But in a real game, you would put them all out there. So let's do green first. And this is how the game will work. So you're going to have the bids placed by this point. The odds will all be set in stone based on what they're going to be. And now the horses are going to race. The game will end when three horses make it to the towns. And there's three paths. There's paths for each of the horses. On your turn, you will play any card you want. And the horse can move one space. It, if it matches, so if you were here... And he's on a yellow dot. I don't know if you can see it or not, but he's on a yellow dot. Way up there. You can see the dot. So this green is on a yellow dot. Can you see that? Okay. So if I was to play a yellow card, he could move two spaces. So one for the discard of the card, and the dot on the board matches the card I'm playing. So he can move two two spots okay and then if I wanted to I could take the die whatever number is on here so it's five if I roll the die since five or less I can move again that's three spots if I can roll one more time I roll five or below I move four spots six or higher which I rolled a ten he doesn't move at all so you're risking yourself so when you're planning out, you want to plan out to get the higher numbers for the courses you want to win, colors that match the path that you think they'll be on, and then you're going to have the luck of the roll. So he had an opportunity to move one, two, three, four spots, but instead he moved zero because on the fourth time I pressed my luck, I rolled ten. And then the next horse would go. So there's a little bit of an advantage to being at the top because... Theoretically, you would have more moves, at least one more, to meet the bottom. Um, so if the brown was here on the purple, I could play this purple one and move him two and just stop. And just be like one, two, and just have him stop completely. Or I could roll the dice and try to keep going, which in this case, if I had, I'd miss. He wouldn't move anymore. The only other kind of cards, and you continue just to do that until you get to the end. Remember, whoever has the highest bid will be making decisions. If it's a non-playing one, one either nobody bid on or there was a tie for bidding, you just take a random card and you play it. And then if it's a five or six, you must roll the dice once. If it's seven or above, you must roll it twice uh, to differing results. The only other card in the deck is the move-up card, which can be played just for the number if you so choose, or it will move up to the next card behind it. So if yellow um, played this move up card, let's just say, and yellow is really far behind, he would move up to green. There's little lines that go through here to show you where they would go. So he would go right there and move up with green. Perfect time to play the move up card. If you're in the lead, move ups aren't going to help you, so you just play it for the number. And really, that's all there is. It's a super complicated game. It's an easy game to play, but it comes off as very complicated, and you really the, the it's really hard to grasp. You want somebody teaching the game that really knows it, but so you're going to put these you're going to put these bids out here on the market. You're going to play a card to a horse. When each one has six, you're then going to go off and start racing. Where you play cards, you're trying to match the color, and then you can roll the die to pressure lock, um, and that's Pony Express. Who should buy this game? You know, it's really designed for families, I think. I think that's what they're going for here. Other the box has 12 and up. I'm gonna say probably just skip this game altogether. I think there might be better horse racing games. I think there might be better bidding games. I think there might be better card play games. This may be a game that time has passed by. 
if it was, I mean, I don't, I don't know the history of this game or how wonderful people thought it was when it came out. It's just too darn hard to teach. If you get through it, you will have an experience. You will have a decent game. But I hesitate, you know, some games have high learning curves and you say they're worth it. I'm not sure this game has a learning curve that's worth it. Perhaps you would disagree with me. I just never felt like that was worth the effort. And, and, and I just can't, with a good conscience, recommend a game like that. If this feels like, if you feel like this is a game for you, please try it before you buy it. Otherwise, purge. Definite purge.